found these sizzling cheeseburger Doritos. We're gonna make air fryer upside down nachos, Velveeta cheese sauce, caramelized onions, bacon, burger meat. We're gonna to top it with a custom burger sauce and pickles. I'm excited, I hope you're excited. Let's make some upside down nachos. I don't even know what the fuck that even means. Upside down nachos in the air fryer? You're gonna to have to watch this video to figure out what the heck I even mean. Let's just get on with the recipe. All right, first things first. Whoa, that should taste like a Big Mac. Sometimes if you are a long-standing Doritos fan like I am, and new shit comes out, it's good. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever had a bad Dorito. Even in Canada, when they had the ketchup Doritos, that shit smacked. When you're a fan of things, in this case, Doritos, and they release different flavors, you want to try as many of them as possible. Like when I was growing up, they had regular Doritos and Cool Ranch, that was it. Then all of a sudden they had Sweet Chili Heat, which is a Canadian flavor. Then you come to the States, they got Salsa Verde, they got Tapatio, all of a sudden they're introducing ketchup chips in Canada, ketchup Doritos in Canada, they got spicy mustard here. When they release chips like Sizzling Cheeseburger, obviously it's gonna be good. Who am I kidding? Okay, I love Doritos. I am a Dorito fanboy. Anytime they release a flavor, I'm gonna try it. Chances are, I'm gonna make something out of it too. Let's lay some bacon, get that set aside. If I said it once, I've said it a thousand times. All right, typically uh, a burger is on a sesame seed bun. I was trying to figure out how to season the meat, so we're gonna start with some sesame oil. All right, quick little lesson on ground meat. This is 85-15, which means 85% protein or meat, 50% fat. If you want a little less fat, then get like a 93-7 or a 90-10. I like the fat, you know the deal, fat equals flavor. We're gonna season this with some salt and pepper, and I'm also gonna add some onion powder and smoked paprika. I want this crispy, so I'm gonna let the fat kind of render out and then fry the meat. You know how everyone likes a good lacy burger these days? I'm gonna try and achieve that ground beef style. The good thing is, when you cook it down and it gets crispy, the oil, the grease, kind of cooks off. So I don't necessarily have to degrease this. Although if you were recreating this and you wanted to, I'm not gonna judge you. You'll also probably live longer. Let's give it a taste. Ouch. Setting this aside. We're gonna make some caramelized onions. Check this hack out. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. We got oil, we got butter, which makes everything better. Dump in a bunch of onions. We're gonna cook these down for a long time, but not as long as if you were to make regular caramelized onions. I'm gonna speed up the process by adding some sugar to the onions. It's a big hack. Call me Hackman Josh. I'm trying to get this done quick, lickety split. We're back to the number one mission statement in my cooking style, which is path of least resistance. Sugar makes caramel. It's safe to say that adding sugar to onions will make onion caramel or caramelized onions. And even if that's not accurate, it sounds like it probably could be. Imagine me being really educated and telling you things like that. You'd believe it. Let's just quickly do a little Google search on adding sugar to onions. Adding sugar to onions while caramelizing them can help speed up the process and make them sweeter. So I was definitely right. However, some say you don't need the extra sugar and that the onions can already contain enough sugar to caramelize them with thyme, which I'm not introducing to, and heat. If you want to add sugar, you can try adding a teaspoon for every five onions. After that, they've softened. After they've softened, they turn golden. So, after doing a Google search, I'm right. Is it necessary? No. Will it shorten the time, AKA giving you the path of least resistance? Yes. All right, whereas normal caramelized onions takes probably 45 minutes to an hour, this took about 15 minutes, roughly. And maybe they're not as caramelized as, as you normally get, but I, this is what I like on my burger. It's more of like a grilled, I guess, caramelized-ish onion, if you will. Start making the nacho cheese, and in the interim of that, make the sauce. Now, for this, I'm using Velveeta. Not quite American cheese, contrary to popular belief. People are often like, why are you using plastic cheese? I don't think, Velveeta's plastic cheese. I don't know why people think that. Like Kraft Singles, 
which is like the original Velveeta, came in plastic. That would make sense, actually. But let's read these ingredients real quick. Skim milk, milk protein. As I read all this, I realize there's not really any cheese in it. <laughs> My point is this, American cheese, actual American cheese, is a blend of cheese and milk. Velveeta, maybe not so much. For this example of uh, these nachos, I don't really care. What is Velveeta anyways? It's liquid gold. Literally, that's, that's Velveeta's slogan, liquid gold. I like gold and I like liquid. This is a no brainer. Using Velveeta is a no brainer. In the realm of processed cheese, this is obviously that. Um, I think real American cheese is a blend of cheeses and milks, straight up. Velveeta, after reading the ingredients, there's actually no cheese in it whatsoever. It's cool. Look, we're already drinking fluoride in our water, okay? We already eat an abundance of plastic, uh, like what, a credit card a year versus plastic in your, in your food? What's some processed cheese really gonna do to me? And when it comes to liquid cheese, when it comes to making a cheese sauce that isn't gonna harden up as fast as real cheese sauce, Velveeta actually works very, very well. Plus, if you're gonna make a very good mac and cheese and you wanna do it very easily, Velveeta, milk, noodles, it's really all you need. Cheese sauce, mac and cheese, you're welcome. By the way, this is not sponsored, although Velveeta, if you're listening, hit me with the bag. We're gonna melt this cheese in an air fryer. What do you mean, this is healthy, there's zero calories in it. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do, okay? We have about a half a pound of Velveeta cheese. I'm gonna add about a cup and a bit of some whole milk directly into the air fryer. Probably should have measured that, but this is rogue cooking. Now we're gonna add a bunch of Velveeta cubes. This is gonna go directly in the air fryer. I'm gonna put it on for about five to 10 minutes just until the cheese and the milk melts. Burger sauce. We're gonna combine some mayonnaise, barbecue sauce, and Worcestershire. A little bit of honey, smoked paprika, onion powder, and a little bit of pickle juice. And last but not least, some black pepper. Good burger sauce. All right, I don't know what the hell is going on there. Maybe I added too much milk. That's okay. We'll add some more cheese. At this point, the nacho cheese is good to go. Before we put this back in, let's build these nachos. <laughs> this is where things get friggin' stupid. We're gonna start layering different things, right? So we're gonna add the bacon first, then we're gonna add the ground beef, then I'm gonna add the Doritos. Oh, you think we're just adding one bag? That'd be stupid. You see how much cheese there is in there? Now comes the, the danger part. They do call me Josh Danger Elkin. Two, three. Let, let's just let it go for a second. Give it a little couple of tap taps. Oh, I see the cheese seeping out the sides. Come on, that is insane, right? Like, come on, what is even happening here? But good thing to know, we see the chips, we see the meat, we see the, the beef. Okay, we're not done. Of course we're not done. Caramelized onions, we're gonna add a bunch of that on top here. I also like pickles on mine, so we're gonna add a little bit of pickles going on like this. This looks like a cheeseburger nacho plate to me. I don't know about you guys. Wild. The nachos are always the craziest. Obviously, we're not done. We got this little sauce action going on here. One more thing to really, it's not burger enough for me yet. There's only one more thing. I didn't even tell Jeff I was gonna do this. Sesame seeds. Ladies and gentlemen, Doritos, cheeseburger nachos. Let's just go over what the situation is here. Two pounds of nacho cheese, one pound of ground beef, 
half a pound of bacon, two large white onions, a bunch of sauce, and pickles, and a little bit of sesame seeds for garnish. You know what I have to do here? I have to wear a glove to eat this because the cheese situation here is wild. But that's a bite right there. That's a bite and a half. Mm. Wow. For the days where cheeseburger Doritos aren't enough, cheeseburger nachos will take the cake. Or in this case, the chip. I know you guys want to see ridiculous things like this happen. So leave a comment letting me know what other dumb things I should make using Doritos. See you on the next one. There's no reason for me to do this. Ever. Am I mad at it? Not so much.